Isn't it amazing how many eyes can be bought? Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. You've heard that saying, only the good die young, but the evil seem to live forever. You've heard that, I'm sure. Um, there is a metal band that I used to listen to as a lost man called Iron Maiden. They even did a song, only the good die young and the evil seem to live forever. Beg your pardon, right? Um, a good variation to that that I've heard before. The good die young, but jerks seem to live forever, right? Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Turn to Isaiah chapter 57. I'm just going to look to start um, at two verses here. These ought to be uh, familiar unto you. Please follow me along. You are expected to. Isaiah 57, verses 1 and 2. The righteous perish, perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart. And merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds each one walking in his uprightness. His uprightness. Whose uprightness? Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we can look at those two verses and put two and two together and come up with four, not 36. And, yeah, the good, those who are of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Church of the Living God, remember there is none good. No, not one. The good that is in you, brother or sister, it's not of you yourself, but is of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. We know that, right? Yeah. But we are taken away, none considering, being spared of the evil to come. We know that. We know that. But when you think about it, too, about these evil men and this evil system, that uh, Satan through the Roman Catholic Church and the Jesuits have been building for centuries. Being allowed to, of course, by our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Ain't going to last long, is it? Is it? Go to Psalm 127. Psalm 127. Psalm 127. I want us to mainly concentrate on the first two verses, but we are going to read the entire Psalm 127. Hopefully you have enough time to read this with me. <laughs> Psalm 127. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman walketh or waketh but in vain. Excuse me. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. And for our instruction in righteousness today, do you not know that you are accepted in the beloved? And our Lord says, Come on to me, all ye who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Okay? And he will give you rest. Let's, let's finish the psalm. For the sake thereof. Lo, children are in heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. 
Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. And for our instruction in righteousness, you know, those who preach and teach the scriptures through the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit. Okay? There are those who will come to the Lord through what the Lord speaks through some of you. But again, concentrating on verses 1 and 2. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Who is doing the work? Is it you or is it the Lord? Who art thou working for? The Lord Jesus Christ or the prince of the power of the air, Satan? Which one doeth the work? See, we as man, we can, we can do a lot of work, can't we? We can do a lot of things in our flesh. But who gets the glory? Go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. I just passed it. Reading verses 1 on to verse 7. 2 Timothy, Brad. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 7. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. See, what the Lord has put in us, we are to work out. Okay? We're not just supposed to hoard it there for ourselves, but we are to share what the Lord has given us. How are we, hi, how are we doing at that? And not just in work out there, here, but how are we doing that in our daily lives? Are we working out what the Lord has put in? Verse 2, or verse 3, excuse me. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Now that doesn't mean that you be flippant about your daily activities, no. It means that you don't put all your time and efforts onto things that are happening around the world, but you concentrate first on our Lord Jesus Christ. In the beginning, God. Very first words in the scripture. In the beginning, God. Putting our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, first in all things. Okay? How are we doing at that? Look at verse 5. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Look at verse 5. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. Now think about this. Think about this. 
you might be doing something that you think is a good work for the Lord. And, and, and indeed, it might be good. It might be. Amen. But see, striving lawfully, according to the scriptures. You know, in the book of Acts, how the Holy Ghost had prevented some of them from going into certain areas, but would rather them go to other places. You know, when, uh, when I go out tracting, uh, I, I always pray. You know, it's like, Lord, where do you want me to track today? Is there some place you want me to go? Show me, teach me, lead me, guide me. And there have been times when I go to track and the, I put one track out and, wait a minute, wait a minute. Lord, the Lord be like, no, Brad, not here. Okay? You move on. And you be guided by him. Hmm? Okay? You need to balance what you are doing for our Lord off of what? The scriptures. Never your feelings. Never your feelings. Your feelings have a place, yes. But if they are the um, thing that is you are basing what truth is is to you, then you have a problem. It says, and if a man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned, except he strive lawfully. And how do you strive lawfully, my dear friend? According to the scriptures. And you have to be open onto the guiding of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit. Because you can do a good work, but it is, is it a good work that the Lord has called you on to? And I'm not talking about for you twits for salvation. No, 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 no. You are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. And whatever it is that he has called you to, wherever you are, whatever capacity it is he has called you to, you are there to be an ambassador, a witness onto our Lord of the power of what he has done for you on the cross. You are to work it out, see. But are you striving lawfully, meaning according to the scriptures, or are you doing your own work? Huh? Go to Luke chapter 10. Go to Luke chapter 10. Go to Luke chapter 10, verses 38 on to verse 42. I think I've talked about this before, but we're going to hit this again, okay? Luke chapter 10, verses 38 on to verse 42. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But Martha was cumbered about much serving, fluttered, cumbered, you know, doing much things, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. Look at, you know, what was Martha doing? She was cumbered about much serving, okay? Here God the Father was entered in to her, into her place. She's thinking, you know, oh, I got to do this. I got to get this ready. I got to serve this, 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 this. I got to do all this. And it's like, uh, there's Mary just sitting there listening to the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Right? And Martha was like, Lord. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha. Thou art careful and troubled about many things.
But one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Verse 39, And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Verse 42, But one thing is needful. One thing is needful. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. That is the one thing that is needful. See, obviously without him, you can do nothing. Nothing of eternal consequence. Nothing of eternal reward. We can do a lot, can't we? But who is doing it? Are you seeking to glorify the Lord through your labor? Or are you submitting yourself unto the Lord to be used of him for his own glory? There's a big difference. There's a big difference. Can you discern which, what the difference is? Striving lawfully. How do you strive lawfully? How shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Go to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Well, keep in mind all these devils online out there. The Roman Catholic Church and the Jesuits who for centuries have been building, 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 building for what? For the son of perdition to rule the world by the volition of a, of a single man. as what uh, Napoleon Bonaparte said. Okay? I'll try to remember to link that video in, this, in the description of but they have been striving, working for centuries to establish what? The son of perdition. The man of sin. In his kingdom. Which is only going to last not even seven years. Think about that. Think about that as we continue. Let's go to Acts chapter 4. We will be reading from verse 5 on to verse 22. Acts chapter 4. Still within the transition within Acts, in the book of Acts. Okay? The finality of the rejection of the Jewish people of the gospel, uh, or the rejection of the gospel by the Jewish people. Beg your pardon. Uh, was uh, reached in Acts chapter 7. Okay? So, Acts chapter 4, verses 5 on to verse 22. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have ye done this? <laughs> Where did you go to school? Who gave you this authority to speak like that? Where did you get your doctorate? I, I, if I hear that one more time, I think I'm going to vomit. <laughs> you need to get the credentials from the Jesuits, you know, one of those cemetery schools. You know? Who gave you this authority? Like I said, if I hear that or I'm asked that one more time, I think I'm going to vomit. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, and remember, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, 
If we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man by what means he made he is made whole, excuse me, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God hath whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. It is my Father that doeth the works. It is the Father that doeth the works. Who's, who's the Father? This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, an exclusive statement. As our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, made the exclusive statement of himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Here's another one. The exclusivity. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Verse 13. Verse 13. Check this out. Now when they saw that the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, excuse me, ignorant men, they marveled. Now stop right there. Stop right there. Ignorant and unlearned. Or unlearned and ignorant. Didn't learn according to their standard. And didn't know what they knew according to their own standards. See. Peter and John were hardly trained as priests. Were they? This plays in to um, verse 7. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power and by, or by what name have ye done this? For an example, was it Gamaliel? Huh? Modern example. Was it John MacArthur at his, what is it, Master's Cemetery School? Huh? Was it at uh, Moody um, Bible Institute, uh, Dallas Theological Cemetery? Uh, incidentally, on that place, if you've ever looked into that just for your own curiosity, looking at Dallas Theological Cemetery, <gasps> okay, Be I beg your pardon, okay? Yeah, that that's what they were, you know, unlearned and ignorant. Who gave thee this power? In whose name? And isn't it isn't it just beautiful that he said in verse 12, Peter said, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they took knowledge of them, that they had been with Jesus. I'll stop right there before we continue. That they had been with Jesus. Now, stop. Think. Whatever the work you are doing for our Lord, is it of the Lord's will and his doing that you do it? How do you know? Pray. Search the scriptures. And have the guts to ask the Lord the hard questions. Because you know, like he did with the rich young ruler, he's going to put his finger on that very thing. But see, these guys who were thinking in the realm of flesh. Okay? Even they knew. That they had, they, and was it say, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. When your ways please the Lord, 
even your enemies will be at peace with you because you're doing what the Lord will. That doesn't mean that enemies aren't going to rise up. But see, remember, these enemies are of Satan. To try you, to check you, to buffet you. Remember, remember brethren, there is no coincidences. Nothing just happens. Okay? Do we truly, in every single moment of our lives, put God into the equation first, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father? Do I? Do you? Let's continue. But when they had commanded them, oh, excuse me, verse 14. And beholding the man which was healed, standing with them, they could say nothing against it. Because they had been with Jesus. It's like the proof was right there. What are you going to do? And see, when the lost and these devils see you, church of the living God, who are sealed unto the day of redemption, who have the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and the Lord is that Spirit dwelling within you, you're marked, so to speak. They know. And all they can do is be allowed to pick at you, pick at you. They are the true pests, by the way. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. You know how Paul says, Never, um, uh, what is it? Uh, instead of butchering it, go to the Corinthians chapter 2. Corinthians, uh, Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. This has been one of these things that I just can't get away from lately. Um, you know, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Go back to uh, Acts chapter 4. Saying, verse 16, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. Those who once knew who you were as a lost man, and you are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of truth, Oh, they can deny it all they want. They could outwardly deny it, but it's like, no, 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 no. There's something different there. And that is not of yourself. See, remember, too, one of the things that these devils will do, they think that it's all you. They think that it's your flesh. But then again, the devils know because our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, dwelleth within you, speaking solely to the church of the living God. But see, these devils, they want to pick at that flesh because that's what they live in. It's all about the flesh. Look at, the, look at what's going on today. Look at the Roman Catholic Church. Look at the Jesuits. Look at, uh, look at Satan, our enemy. Okay? For he is about the things that are of men, not the things that are of God. Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are ye? And see, if you are truly saved and born again of the church of the living God, you, God is in you. A 
Okay, you know that, right? But... Grasp the enormity of it. And let that be in your mind the next time that you allow your mind to wander places where it shouldn't go and you make the choice to sin. It is an inevitability, of course. But keep that in mind, the fear of the Lord. You are not your own. Not only is the Lord watching you because he sees everything, but the devils are watching you. Verse 17. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them, that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. See, a notable miracle has been done in you, brother, sister. Somewhere along the line, a devil is going to come across your path because Satan is the accuser of the brethren. That's all he does. To try to trip you up. Because what do they not want you to do? The devils. What do they not want you to do? But that it spread no further among the people. Oh, get a load of that. Let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Nowadays, it's like, but no, the Jesus that they want you to preach to these devils, which is the son of perdition. The abomination that maketh desolate. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. Judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had fur further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was shewed. See, you are to work out what he has put in. And see, that is why being in the scriptures is so important. You have to be in the scriptures. It's not an option, brethren, sisters. It's not an option. Let, let, let me tell you something. You're not in these scriptures every single day. That leaves many doors open. And that also leaves you to yourself. Think about it. Roll that around in your head a little bit. Roll that around in your head just a little bit, okay? Go to John now, chapter 14, okay? All right. Look at verse 8 very quick in Acts chapter 4, verse 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto the people, with the Holy Ghost. Okay? Go to John. Go to John. John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verses 15 on to verse 18. If ye love me, Oh, John 14, verses 15 on to verse 18. If ye love me, keep my commandments. We don't have to keep the commandments today in this dispensation, Brad. 
okay, buddy, so there's no commandments for us today in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. See, if that is your thought, <laughs> then what's the standard? The Bible. You call it the Bible. It's the scriptures, thank you. But the Bible, yeah? Um, okay, there, genius. If you're not reading it, And the Pauline epistles, specifically for us today in this dispensation, the entirety of the scriptures for instruction in righteousness? Yeah. There are many commandments for us today in this dispensation that the apostle for today, our apostle, gave us. Okay? Speaking of us Gentiles. But then again, what Paul preached is also what Peter and the rest of the apostles adhered to. And you can look at that in Acts chapter 15 on your own time. Let's continue though. John 14, verses 15 on to verse 18. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father... And he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of Truth, capital S, the Lord himself, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Now, now look at this. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And, and look at verse 17. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Go back to Acts chapter 4 very quickly. Acts chapter 4, verse 16, uh, verse 15 and 16. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. I was talking about the healing of the one lame man, yes. Think about this, brethren. The Holy Ghost that dwells within you. Who is that? The third person of the evil satanic twinity? No. Because a person is a what? A spirit, soul, and body. Who is the Holy Ghost? Verse 18 in John 14. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Okay? And skip down to uh, verse 23 on to verse 27 now. Okay? Jesus answered and said unto them, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Verse 27. Peace I leave with you, the Comforter. My peace I give unto you. The Comforter, the Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that Spirit. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid.
Go now to John 16, verses 7 on to verse 16. John 16, verses 7 on to verse 16. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. Because he's physically on the earth. For if I do not go away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Uh, uh, okay, wait, 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 wait. Verse 26 in John, what is this, 14? But the Comforter which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. Okay, and then, okay, um, verse 7 in John 16. Uh, but if I depart, I will send him on to you. When you get right down to it, the Godhead is not that difficult to understand. That satanic, vile, disgusting, vomitous trinity? Good luck with that. Like the one uh, video, um, the trinity was meant to confuse you? <laughs> yeah. Let's continue. And when he has come, verse 8 in John chapter 16, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. I forget there's some devil witch out there who said that the Holy Ghost doesn't convict you of sin or anything. <laughs> yeah, maybe not under her. I, I don't know. Um, can't remember. Oh, uh, what was that lady's name? Um, Renee Roland or something like that. You know, chain smoker. <laughs> Good luck. But um, yeah, she was the one who said that. Yeah, she was right on her behalf that the Holy Ghost doesn't convict her of sin because she doesn't have the Holy Ghost. And then again, she's sitting teaching people. Yeah, the rabbit trail, never mind. Verse 9, of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judge, is judged, prince of the power of the air, that's Satan. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. All things, okay, look at verse 15. Okay, looking at verse 14, he's going to explain to you what verse 14 means here by verse 15. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shew it on to you. Okay, do you understand that? He is the Father, Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Father, okay? Yet a little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Talking about when, after his death, burial, and resurrection, he appeared unto them, and then he ascended up to heaven. Okay. So the Spirit of Truth will guide you into all truth. And those uh, in Acts chapter 4 took notice of them that they had been with Jesus. And it is the Father that doeth the works. You know, when our Lord says, greater works will you do than these because I go to the Father? Yeah. On earth, the ministry of our Lord lasted for three years. There are some who have been in ministry for onwards to 10 years. Now, go back to the book of Acts, chapter 5. And here is the centerpiece. 
Here's the centerpiece of everything that I'd like us to consider today. Acts chapter 5, verses 24, on to the close of the chapter. Now when the high priest and the captain, now this is after the, the Lord busted Peter out of prison, okay? This is after that. You go ahead and read the context on your own time, okay? And that's from verse 1 on to verse 23, obviously, okay? But we're going to read verses 24 on to the close of the chapter. Come on. Now, when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence. Note that. Why? For they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And verse 26, when you think about it, you know the book 1984 by, I'm convinced, uh, at least the Freemason George Orwell, at least the Jesuit coadjutor George Orwell, his book 1984, where Satan was boldly saying to you, this is what I'm going to be allowed to do in the latter times, okay? Uh, why am I bringing that up? Simple. Governments are supposed to fear the people, not people the government. And brethren, Church of the Living God, ground and pillar of the truth, um, do not the people fear the government? Just thought I'd make a mention of that. Let's continue. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Amen, 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 amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Then Peter, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. See, devils don't want the truth to spread any further. And I am persuaded one of the most ingenious, subtle tricks that the devil can be allowed to play upon you, brother or sister, is that you are doing a good work for the Lord, but it is out of your own flesh. and not of the Lord himself. Let's continue. Verse 30. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, capital P and a capital S, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is who? The Lord Jesus Christ. And who is the Lord Jesus Christ? God our Father. One God. Not three persons. One God. Whom God hath given to them that obey him. Obey him. Coming to him on his terms. A broken and contrite sinner. Trusting on what he has done. Coming to him broken and contrite. Having godly sorrow. You put him there. You put him on that cross. Yes, you did. I did. And your sorrow is what you have done to him to put him on that cross. You go to him. Trust on what he did for you. And in that sorrow and contrition, you will ask him to save you. It's not the asking. It's the heart that is broken and contrite. And see, devils don't get that. 
You can't. You can't. So let's continue. Verse 33. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart. Cut to the heart. Oh boy. And took counsel to slay them. They were cut to the heart. Wanted to kill them. And, uh, just very quickly, <clears throat> uh, verse 54 in Acts chapter 7. Acts 7, verse 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and gnashed on him with their teeth. You, if your heart is cut, it bleeds, doesn't it? And right here, verse 33 in Acts chapter 5, when they heard that, they were cut to the heart. Isn't that interesting? And of course, in Acts chapter 2, they were pricked. And they said, what shall we do? Let's continue. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had a reputation among all the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space, and said unto them, you, ye men of Israel, Take heed to yourselves that what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days there rose up Thaddeus, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who was slain. And all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing. There you go, Catholic. Verse 37 is the mention of the Maccabean revolt. Okay? It doesn't say anything about the book of Maccabees, but here, verse 37 there, there's your mention of the Maccabean revolt. Okay? After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing, and drew away much people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. Why? Because it was of men. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, flesh, it will come to naught. Nothing. Ah. But, if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it. Oh, that makes you angry, doesn't it? Good. I hope so. I hope it chafes your buttocks. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest happily ye be found even to fight against God. If it be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it. You'll get your little victories here and there. But in the end, you ain't doing nothing against the Lord. And look at verse 40. Verse 40 is very interesting. Look at that. And to him they agreed. Yeah, you're right. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them and commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Okay, they agreed to what Gamaliel was saying was the truth. But yet, they said, hey, don't talk in that guy's name. Beat him up and let him go. That's very interesting, isn't it? 
They agreed. You're, that's right. You, you could be right. But yet they didn't have the forethought to uh, go ahead and beat these, to not beat these guys up and command them not to do that because they were not of God themselves. Isn't that interesting? They went out from us, but were not of us. They say, Lord, Lord. But he said unto them, I never knew you. Oh, gee. Let's continue. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Rejoice and be glad, therefore, because great is your reward in heaven. If you're striving lawfully, hold on, let's read, finish this. And daily in the temple and in every house they ceased, ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Now see, you can, of your own flesh, go out there and get persecuted for Jesus' sake. You can. You can. But ultimately, is that what the Lord is choosing for you to do? Hmm? Is, it a, is it a shame put upon you by you taking the initiative alone? Or is it a shame because the Lord said to you, put that track over there. Go up to that guy. Get out the scriptures. And let's talk to him. Or is it what I will do? How serious do you take this? Speaks volume to where you are actually at. And we have, we have to keep these things in our memories, brethren. Especially what's going on today. Especially what's, what's going on today. Go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. I can't read my own handwriting. Verses 17 on to verse 24. Ephesians chapter 4. Verses 17 on to verse 24. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay? And have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Been taught by him. The spirit of truth. He will guide you into all truth. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. The Lord is that spirit. If so be that ye have heard him. Heard him how? Through the scriptures. And have been taught by him. He opened their understanding to understand the scriptures. He expounded to them the scriptures. And have been taught by him. The spirit of truth will guide you into all truth. And the Lord is that spirit. As the truth is in Jesus. I am the way. The truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now 
that ye put off concerning the former conversation. The old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. You know, the old man. See, if the Lord Jesus Christ is truly within you, if he truly is, God the Father, you know, the Holy Ghost. Oh, beg your pardon. If he is truly within you, he is going to tell you what to do. He's going to teach you. He's going to show you. He ain't going to force you to do it. But if you disobey him, and you are of the church of the living God, you disobey what he tells you to do, he will give you over to yourself, that your flesh may be destroyed, that your spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. But see, if, ye, if the Lord ain't in you, then what does it matter? Without him, you can do nothing. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. His righteousness and holiness being separate than, other than. Not better than, you know. Separate. Separate. But see, someone who says that they are and are not, their mind isn't renewed. <laughs> if anything, it's worse. Be open, brethren. Be aware of our Lord guiding you. And you balance that always, always upon the scriptures. Because the minute you close this book and go with your feelings, um, you're playing with fire, boy. You're playing with fire. Now go to 1 Corinthians. Go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Got to touch this. First Corinthians chapter 3. Verses 1 under verse 13. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, fleshly, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. See, as it says in Isaiah chapter 28, those who are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast, meaning that you are going to grow and be eventually be able because you will have your senses exercised and you're staying in the word, you will be able to receive strong meat. But if you just stay here, which the devil wants you to, he wants you to be here and not to grow. Verse 3. For ye are yet carnal, fleshly, living in your flesh. For whereas there is among you envying and strife, in divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? Walk as mere men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal, fleshly, walking as men? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. 
I have planted, Apollos watered, but through my Jesuit education at the cemetery school, um, I have given it. By my imitating and uh, trying to imitate those who are truly of the church of the living God, I have. I have planted. Apollos watered. But God gave the increase. It's amazing how many eyes can be bought for money, isn't it? So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth. But God that giveth the increase. God is the one who giveth the increase. God is the one who gives the increase. Those of you who have come to this channel, it's God who giveth the increase. You might be curious because of what devils have said. But if you look, it's God who giveth the increase. But if you are working in your own power, in your own flesh, it will come to naught. The kingdom of the son of perdition, the abomination that maketh desolate, is going to come to naught. All the schemes, all the propaganda, all the stuff of the whore, mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism, and her army, the Jesuits, all of this is going to come to naught because it is of flesh. It's going to come to naught. All their petty attacks, all that they do to hinder the gospel, they are fighting against God. It will come to naught. That's why it's so important, brother, sister, that you are continually being fed of the scriptures. Right? That cannot be stressed enough. Verse 8. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, because they are of the same spirit. And the Lord is that spirit. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor, to whatever capacity that he has called you on to. Okay? Lord has said to you, for example, I want you to do tracting. Go do it. I'll be with you. Go do it. Go do it. Similar again to the children of Israel. Back in Numbers, the Lord said, there's the promised land. Trust me. I'm with you. I'll give it to you. Go do it. But what they do? They got scared because of what they saw. And they were afraid of flesh rather than having faith on the Lord. And boy, did they pay a price for that. You can go look that up. Numbers chapter 11. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's in the book of Numbers. Go ahead. Look that up. Very fascinating. Law of instruction in righteousness for today. I fought the Lord for doing this for quite a while. For quite a while. And there are those of you out there who know that of me. That this, I fought the Lord for a long time on doing this until he finally took everything out of the way. It's like almost as if he were saying to me, now you ain't got no choice. <laughs> I did have a choice. Of course I did. But I finally chose to find him. You win. I will. 
And I have trust on the Lord that he will do. On the Lord, because who gives the increase? If you're making your own increase, it's going to come to naught. <laughs> Up the dosage there, buddy. Verse 9. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Not the buildings. <laughs> According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Aha! Take heed how he buildeth thereupon. How? Out of your own wit? Out of your own doing? Or the Lord saying, this is the way you I want you to do it. You do it my way. And I'm going to bless you. You do it your way, sure, you can go ahead and get a lot of things done. But guess what? You ain't going to get nothing from me, boy. You see? Verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. I have laid the foundation. And no other foundation can no man lay, which is Jesus Christ, in the beginning God, God first. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Gold, silver, precious stones abide the fire. This is talking about our works, not our salvations, you wicked Catholics. Okay, gold, silver, precious stones will abide fire. Wood, hay, stubble, burn up. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it. Because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. And if we were to continue, it's talking about our rewards, not our salvation. Okay, okay. Those of you of the Church of the Living God, you know that. Okay? But see, the work that you do out there will be tried by fire of what sort it is. And put this into your head. Have you been laboring so hard, so diligently of late, but yet, according to how you see it, nothing is coming about? Or are you laboring so hard and you can see so much? Which one is doing the works? Is it just you? Or are you following what the Lord has told you to do? Huh? Go to Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah chapter 29. Oops, oops, oops. Isaiah chapter 29. <laughs> Whenever I hold the scriptures in my hands, my hands get sweaty for some reason because of the genuine leather cover that this is. So, <laughs> never mind, I'm sorry. Isaiah chapter 29, verses 13 on to verse 17. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, 
and their works are in the dark, and they say, Who seeth us? And who knoweth us? Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay, you devils. Yeah. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Broken, come to naught. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he hath no understanding? Is it not yet a little, a very little while, and Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest? See, the fear taught by the precepts of men. Think about the Jehovah's, the Jehovah's Witnesses. They have a mandate to follow. They have to go out to earn their stuff by going from houses to houses. But of course, they're not doing it and all this stuff. But think about the Jehovah's. They have to go out by the precepts of men to go do their things. They have to do that. And also think about the Catholics. They're doing their works to save themselves. You know, the seven-step ladder of salvation to the Catholic, okay? Penance, uh, what, what, I can't remember them all offhand. There's so many, <laughs> okay? By what? The traditions of men. The fear is taught to me by the precepts of men. Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7, verse 6 on to verse 13. Mark chapter 7, verses 6 on to verse 13. Think about the Catholics. All about the flesh. The devil, who holds in esteem the things that be of men, not of God. And the things that be of men are an abomination in the sight of God. The things that are highly esteemed among men, excuse me, are an abomination in the sight of God. Mark chapter 7, verses 6, under verse 13. He answered and said unto them, which we just looked at this, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain, they, in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, It is Corban, that is to say, a gift, by what thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered. And many such like things do ye. By the tradition of men by the precepts of flesh. And they think by that they're doing the work of the Lord. Especially Catholics, Jehos, the you you poor Catholics. I have a video I and I'll, I'll I'll try to remember to link these things. I, I forget often of that. Uh, I did a video a long time ago about Catholic salvation. Okay, how it's a, it's a long drawn out process, and it's work salvation without any assurance of salvation. Because remember, to the Catholic, it's the sin of presumption to know that you are saved and going to heaven. It's the sin of presumption. Okay, keep that in mind. Trying to do all these works, but void of the Spirit. 
void of the Lord, the one doing it through you. And what was that in Colossians, which I read this morning? Colossians chapter 2. Verses 18 on to verse 23. This was not part of my notes. Colossians chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 23. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. And not holding the head, capital H there, from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of man. Oh, no, it doesn't say that. With the increase of God. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why as though living in the world are ye subject to ordinances? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, fleshly. Touch not. <laughs> Think about what's going on right now. But the stupid, ri ridiculous, I was going to say something else, ridiculous social distancing. Touch not. Taste not. Handle not. Which, are, which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men which are going to come to naught. All this stuff that's going on right now, it's going to come to naught. Which things have indeed a show of wisdom and will worship and humility. Oh, it looks good, doesn't it? Oh, the amount of eyes you can buy with money. And neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. Oh, it looks so good, doesn't it? But what's doing it? Who's doing it? Yeah. 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 Go to Ezekiel chapter 22. Ezekiel chapter 22. I'll be honest. I had planned on doing this yesterday. But the Lord had another plan. So, just had to throw that out there. Ezekiel chapter 22, verses 13 on to verse 22. Ezekiel chapter 22. Verses 13 on to verse 22. Behold, therefore, I have smitten mine hand at thy dishonest gain, which thou hast made, and at thy blood which hast been in the midst of thee. Think of all these devils, brethren, these poor Catholics. Hmm, they're reaping what they sow and they're going to get what's coming to them. But their work's going to come to naught. Can thine heart endure or can thine hands be strong in the days that I shall deal with thee? I, the Lord, have spoken it and will do it. And I will scatter thee among the heathen and disperse thee in the countries and will consume thy filthiness out of thee. And thou shalt take thine inheritance in thyself in the sight of the heathen and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, the house of Israel is become Son of man, the house of Israel is to me become dross. All they are brass and tin and iron and lead 
in the midst of the furnace. Furnace, excuse me. They are even the dross of silver. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because ye are all become dross, behold, therefore, I will gather you into the midst of Jerusalem. And they, as they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow the fire upon it, to melt it, so will I gather you in mine anger and in my fury, and I will leave you there and melt you. Uh, I believe clear reference unto the Holocaust. Yea, verse 21, I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath, and ye shall be melted in the midst thereof. As silver is melted in the midst of the fire, so shall ye be melted in the midst thereof, and ye shall know that I, the Lord, have poured out my fury upon you. Their work will come to naught, brethren. And in whatever capacity our Lord has called you to, wherever he has put you, you follow the Lord's leading. He's, you Go here, you listen to me, I'll tell you where to go, I'll tell you what to do. Keep your nose right there, and let's go. Don't work in your flesh. Beg your pardon. Haggai. The book of the prophecy of Haggai. Haggai. Come on, fingers, get there. Haggai, chapter 1, verses 12, on to verse 11. Verse 2, on to verse 11. Haggai, chapter 1, verse 2, on to verse 11. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in sealed houses, and this house lieth waste? For This is for our instruction in righteousness, by the way, if you haven't figured that out already. Okay? What the Lord has given you, we are to work out. Not hoard it just for ourselves. You know, the difference between esoteric, esoteric, one is for the general populace and one are for those who are in the know. No. What the Lord has given, put into us, we are to work out that others may behold the wondrous works of the Lord. Let's continue. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Ye have so much. Oh, oh. Ye have so much. And bring in little. Ye eat. But ye have not enough. Ye drink. But ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you. But there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag of holes, bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Oh yeah, but what I'm doing for the Lord is making a lot of pride. What you're doing for the Lord. What you're doing for the Lord. Or rather, what the Lord is doing through you. A brother of mine rebuked me very gently the last I spake with him about 
because you know i i often make mention about how we are busy out there and then he in s such a beautiful way is like uh you know to talk about your uh, about tracking and stuff is that boasting <laughs> and brother you know who you are if you see this thank you i love you bless your heart and soul thank you for that rebuke i have not forgotten it consider your ways who's doing the work who's doing the work I'm doing all this stuff and look at it. Yeah. Who's doing it though? You or the Lord? How do you know? Search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Ask the Lord. Um, he'll tell you. you. Just wait for him to give you the answer. On his time. Not yours. Verse 8. Go up to the mountain and bring wood. And build the house, and I will take pleasure in it. And you will be glorified, saith the Lord. No, excuse me, no. And I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when ye brought it home, I, blew, I did blow upon it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts? Because of mine house that is waste. And ye run every man unto his own house. Not putting the Lord first. But you think about your own backside. Putting him first in all things. There is still work to be done out there. Absolutely. Doors are closing rapidly, but they are not totally shut yet. Whatever the capacity is that he has put you into, or that you are in. Do what the Lord will have you to do, and have the guts to do it. And until he check you, go with that confidence and faith, knowing that until he rebuke you, that you are doing what he will have you to do. Verse 10, therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. I called for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon the cattle, and upon all the labor of the hands. And upon all the labors of the hands. Why? Consider your ways. Do what he will have you to do, to do. As guided by him that he may be glorified. Not you. Like I said, a brother a while ago rebuked me on that. And he was right. Praise the Lord. For a godly rebuke from a brother. Go to Isaiah chapter 3. Isaiah chapter 3. See. It will, the Lord will be glorified. Consider your ways. And go upon his leading. That the Lord be glorified. But what about all these devils. Who are working out of their own flesh. By the power of the prince of the power of the air. Satan. Oh, and they busy. They busy. Their work will come to naught. Isaiah chapter 3, verses 9 on to verse 11. The shoe of their countenance doth witness against them. And they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul. For they have rewarded evil unto themselves. But ye say to the righteous that it shall be well with him. 
for they shall eat the fruit of their doing. So, oh, excuse me. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doing. Woe unto the wicked! It shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given him, and that will come to naught, nothing. Nothing. Beg your pardon. Nothing. All your hard work will come to nothing. Those of you who are of this world, of the flesh, and of the devil himself, Satan. Yeah, hey, keep going, buddies. Yeah. It's going to come to naught. You'll get your little victories, but... We have written down for us at the end. You go bye bye. Go to Psalm seventy three. Psalm seventy three. We're almost done. We're almost done. Psalm seventy three. Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. How shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Cleanse my heart of all wickedness and superfluity. Has the Lord truly cleansed your heart? But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. Why? For I was envious at the foolish. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Oh, don't you struggle with that? You're doing what the Lord will have you to do, and yet these devils are just... Remember what Satan said. All this will I give to thee if you bow down and worship me. All will be thine. It's very easy for us to fall into that trap, isn't it? For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. The good die young, but jerks live forever. <laughs> right? They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride compasseth them about as a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. These devils seem almost unstoppable, don't they, brethren? Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt. They speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. Speak wickedly concerning oppression. It's good for you to stay at home. It's good for you to stay six feet apart. It's good for me. It's good for you. Um, have you heard about that one Polish doctor who was joking about, you know, shot in the arm and then died? I have the link for that. But if I put the link, I know for certain that it will not stay up. Look that up on your own time. But they speak what? Wickedly concerning oppression. It's good for you to stay at home. It's good for you to do social distancing. It's good for you to do the face masks. It's good for you just to believe without going to the Lord on his terms um, brokenness and contrition. 
They speak loftily, boasting proud. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walketh through the earth. Like Satan going uh, to and fro in the earth. You read that in Job 1 and 2, chapters 1 and 2. Therefore his people return hither, and waters of a full cup are run out to them. Remember what Satan said to Jesus in the temptation in Luke chapter 4. All this will I give unto thee, because it is given to me, to whomsoever I will, I'll give it. All shall be thine. I'm paraphrasing grotesquely, excuse me. If thou therefore shalt worship me, all shall be thine. What doth it profit if the man gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Some of you out there who are actually taken by these twits, I hope you consider that. And they say, verse 11, How doth God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily I have cleansed my heart in vain. I washed my hands in innocency. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. Think about that, brother, sister. Look at that. Verse 13 and 14. Sometimes you can get to the point where it's like, okay, here, here I, I, I want to adhere to the scriptures, getting all this junk out of my life that I know you hate, doing what you would have me to do, living by faith and practice according to the scriptures. Lord, I want you. I love you. I need you. I want to adhere to what you say. And I'm doing this as you will have me to do. I, 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 I want. Look at these people who just believe. And look at how great they're doing. Look at all these people, right? Right? Oh, it's easy for us to fall into that, brother, sister, isn't it? Let's keep reading. If I say, I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the children of thy, uh, the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. It can be very painful for you. Amen, right? These guys who preach a, a bloodless gospel, uh, Fake repentance gospel, you know, going from unbelief to belief. A gospel that eternal security is there uh, in every single dispensation. That it's always been faith alone from Genesis on to Revelation. God loves you. Yeah, yeah. They're doing just great, ain't they? Here's the turning point in this psalm. Verse 17, here's the turning point. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their end. Now, stop. If this counsel and work will be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be against God, but if it be of God, beware, lest haply ye fight against God. The sanctuary. Until I went into the sanctuary of God. Our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. How do you go into the sanctuary of God? Get on your knees and pray. Give more than two minutes, five minutes. Sit there like a dummy. And listen. Speak with him, not at him. You know, 
the late Leonard Ravenhill, who had his issues, made a statement that was absolutely profound. No man is greater than his prayer life. Chew on that one a little bit. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their end. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou castest them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment? They are utterly consumed with terrors. What happens to those of you Christians, excuse me, who got it all set up, set up for you and everything collapse? See, we have the church of the living God. We trust in the Lord. And the Lord, we know, will provide our need. He will do it. What do you have? See, that's why, that's why those who are rich. Remember, Paul says, not many noble, not many wise are called. Doesn't say that these wealthy people aren't, but not many. Why? Because they have it rougher than you and I, who are dependent on the smallest of mercies to survive from our Lord Jesus Christ and praise our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, for it. Praise Him for it. Because, see, we are dependent on the Lord. The minute you become dependent on yourself, as a dream when one awaketh, so, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my reins. Pair that with Acts chapter 2 where they said they were pricked in the heart. A pricking where a little comes out. So foolish was I. Foolish. I was foolish. And the fool has said in his heart there is no God. Well, yeah, roll that around in your head a little bit. So foolish was I and ignorant. I was as a beast before thee. The spirit of the beast that goes downward toward the earth. A beast, you know, an animal has a spirit and a body. But you know what they don't got? They don't got a soul. And you little kids out there, if mommy and daddy are letting you watch this, I hope they are. Um, sorry. Yeah, your, your pets are not going to be with you in heaven. Okay? But look at that. The acknowledgement of Asaph here. So foolish was I. Oh, sorry, Lord. <laughs> I should have known better. And ignorant. Ignorant meaning not knowing better. I was as a lost person who said there's no God and I didn't know better. I was as a beast before the... Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by thy right hand. What does our Lord say? Um, Lo, I am with you always. Uh, let, let's, let's go to that. Very good. Hold your place. Go to Matthew chapter 28. After the death, burial, and resurrection. Matthew chapter... Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. 
And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. He will never leave you nor forsake you, church of the living God. Why? Because he has sealed you unto the day of redemption. God himself, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord is that spirit dwells within you. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by thy right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel. And afterward receive me to glory. His counsel. Guide. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. Ah, right there. Right there. And there is none upon earth that I desire besides thee. Beside thee, excuse me. Where is the Lord in your life? You, you say he's number one, right? Is he? Prove your own selves. Examine yourselves. Know ye not your own selves? My flesh and my heart fainteth, uh, faileth, excuse me. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. <laughs> bye bye, buddy. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a whoring from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works, what he did on the cross for you. Go to Proverbs chapter 12. Proverbs chapter 12, verses 12 on to verse 23. Proverbs 12, verses 12, on to verse 23. We're almost done. <laughs> the wicked desireth the net of evil men, but the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and by the recompense of a man's hands shall he be re sh and the recompense with the sea of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. A fool's wrath is presently known. Ah, yeah, isn't it? Temper, temper. <laughs> but a prudent man covereth shame. The implication is a fool's wrath is shameful. He that speaketh truth sheweth forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. This is sharper than any two-edged sword. And the tongue, but the tongue of the wise, those who fear the Lord, is health. Because speaking the word of truth unto you, the Lord, through that vessel me for his use. The lip of truth shall be established, the lip of truth shall be established forever. But a lying tongue is but for a moment. Your works are going to come to naught. Those of you that fight against God. Deceit in the heart of them that, deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil. 
deceived and being deceived. But to the counselors of peace is joy. There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. A prudent man concealeth knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaimeth foolishness. What does that mean? Um, remember how our Lord spake in parables? So that they who were not would see and hear but not understand. But those who are will get it. Those of you who work for Satan, who say that you are of the church of the living God and you're just a Christian, may the Lord have mercy on you. And finally, let's go to Proverbs chapter 24, verses 1 on to verse 20. Remember how we just read Psalm 73? This was yesterday's proverb, by the way. Did you read the 25th proverb for today, by the way? Proverbs chapter 24, verses 1 on to verse 20. Be not thou envious against the evil men, neither desire to be with them. For their heart studieth destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. Through wisdom is an house builded. And what is wisdom? The fear of the Lord. And by understanding it is established. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and depart from evil is understanding. Fear God and depart from evil, your house will be established. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. What is this knowledge that he gives you through the scriptures? A wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge increaseth strength. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war. And in the multitude of counselors there is safety. There are many books that comprise the scriptures. Right? And by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war. We are called, remember, to be a soldier as we looked at earlier. Okay? We're called to be soldiers. And with wise counsel we go and make war. Hello? Hi. And in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Wisdom is too high for a fool. He openeth not his mouth in the gate. In the gate where everyone comes in at. In the gate back in these times is where a lot of things was done business-wise and stuff like that. You see about how the king sat in the gate. He that div deviseth to do evil shall be called a mischievous person. These are mischievous persons. These devils here on YouTube, out there in the pulpits. Mischievous persons. The thought of foolishness is sin. And the scorner is an abomination to men. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death, and those that are ready to be slain, if thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not, doth not he that pondereth the heart consider it, and he that keepeth thy soul, doth not he know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his works? The best way to counsel 
is through the scriptures. That's it. You can say, well, I don't know. But the one whose soul, uh, the one who owns your soul, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, he knows. My son, eat thou honey because it is good. And the honeycomb which is sweet to thy taste. So shall thou, the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. When thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward. And thy expectation shall not be cut off. Lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Spoil not his resting place. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. You'll fall. You're going to sin. You're going to mess up. Forsake it. Repent it. Repent of it. Forsake it. Confess it. Think a bit on it. And then move forward. Don't let these devils keep you here. Rejoice not now. And right here. <laughs> ah, right here. <laughs> Before we continue verses 17 on to verse 20, we have to remember something. These devils... When the Lord will recompense them with the sea, the work of their evil hands, their ultimate end is hell, the lake of fire. That is their ultimate end. God is a just God. His judgments are right and true. And because of his judgment, he is just. And those that go to hell deserve to be in hell. We deserve to be in hell. But we trust on him for what he has done to keep us out of hell. Because what we have done put him on that cross. See, But see, these devils, as much as I don't like you, oh, I really don't like you. But you're in this hell, the lake of fire. I don't want you there. Even though that is where you have chosen. And see, once you have made your choice, you then find it. But still. The end of these people, brethren, is hell. And where our Lord says, rejoice not that devils are cast out because of you but rejoice rather that your names are written in heaven. I just paraphrased that, beg your pardon, but rejoice that you, that the Lord has had mercy on you and that you are saved. Because these devils, their end is the lake of fire. Their end is hell. My mother is in hell. And someone in your family that you know of, dear, dear, brother, sister of the church of the living God, someone that you know of your family is also in hell. So with that said, let's finish this up. Verse 17 on to verse 20 here in Proverbs chapter 24. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth. And oh, that's really hard to do, isn't it? Why? And let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. Why? Lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. 
Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious at the wicked. For there shall be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. Now put this into your head. These devils, they, they'll throw a party when you stumble. They'll, they'll rejoice and be happy all the day long if they can get you away from the truth and get you to walk through filth. They'll rejoice when you stumble. They'll throw a party when you stumble. They'll be just so happy and giddy as little children when they fulfill the works of their father, the devil. That's what they do. But see, what we do, rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth, lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. You start shouting up and down, being glad because the devil finally got what he deserved. Be like, yeah, hey, I want to part. Ah, be careful. Your will be done. Thank you, Lord, for your just and righteous judgment. Thank you, Lord, for being just and true, for rewarding the evil, for recompensing them with the sea, their wicked works. Thank you, Lord, for being just. You gotta watch that. I gotta watch that. Because we have to remember, brethren, these devils whose work will come to naught we know what their end is. Even some of them know what their end is. And we are supposed to be separate, different than. Yes, when these devils, when the Lord shuts them up and takes them out of the way and they go to hell, yes, praise the Lord for his just judgment. Yea, praise the Lord because he is just. But remember that in reflecting upon your own self, brother, sister. Okay? Because I, I, believe me, I know, and, and so does several other who just want to go ahead and call up all their friends and party because so-and-so devil been taken out of the way. That's what they do to us, his body, his church. Church of the living God, the ground and the pillar of truth. You know the two witnesses in the book of Revelation? They're going to, once they are dead, they're going to be celebrating and having a Christ mass, if you will, by sending gifts one to another. Because they tormented them that were on the earth, Moses and Elijah. Let's, oh, I can't see that. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth, lest the Lord see it, and it displease him. And he turn away from his, turn away his wrath from him. Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious at the wicked. For there shall be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. Brethren, there are those out there who have made their choice. They have given themselves over onto the devil, and the devil is using them mightily. They are busy for him. Their end. Hopefully there are some that will truly repent before it is too late and actually get saved and born again, converted. But there are those out there who are so far gone. And the Lord will recompense them with the sea, their evil works that they have done, all the trouble they have caused, 
they're going to get what's coming to them. And if we are privy to see it in this lifetime, thank you, Lord, for your, for your merciful grace, for your just and righteous judgments. Go back to Acts chapter 5. Back to Acts chapter 5. You need to remember this stuff, brethren. Hi! <laughs> Acts chapter 7. Verse 38 and verse 39. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God... Ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. These devil's works, what they do here on YouTube, outside your door, it will come to naught. And the work that the Lord does through his body, the church, no matter what they do, They'll get a messenger here and there, and they can't stop it. You're not going to stop the Lord. So, it's going to be it for this video. Brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Um, Lord willing, I'll have another video tomorrow. Um, the Lord kind of, you know, what I was doing before was... I'd get all these topics and we'd go through the scriptures and try to assemble four, three, two, three, sometimes even five videos, notes, all at once. And I get it so spread out and it and some of some know how I take notes. But recently, more so, it's like, okay, the, the videos are here and I'll write them down, but Instead of trying to do all these at once, one at a time. One at a time. And thus, it's better that way. Instead of trying to cram everything into one and doing, you know, I'm nuts, actually. But um, thus, thus far, you know, Hey, hey, Brad, you know, chill. One at a time. So, one at a time. So, Lord willing, tomorrow, Lord willing, it's up to him. Uh, there may be another video. If not, it's up to him. Remember, brethren, Passover is this Sunday. Uh, the feast of the Jews that I believe they should, not for salvation today, but in remembrance unto the Jewish people, I think they should, they should keep that in memory. And we as the Church of the Living God, the instruction and righteousness that we can get out of the Passover, um, we ought to consider it too, just for our own reflections, stuff like that. Okay. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you do. Uh, my wife and I love you very, very much, Church of the Living God, and we are praying for so, so many of you. Those of you who I have not talked to in a while, whenever you are up to it, please feel free to get a hold of me. If not, we love you. Thank you so much for watching if you do. And we will see you in the next video, Lord willing. Bye-bye.